Hey everyone, welcome to a good football show. I am Matt Straup. It is Thursday, June 2nd, and today on the show we are going to be conducting a live best ball draft. I'm joined by Pat Corain, Kyle Dvorak, and the test subject in this experiment, Pat Doherty, a non-early drafter who will, in fact, be drafting early this afternoon. Just for a little background, Pat, you proposed this idea to me earlier today, and then you immediately thought, wait a second, maybe this is a bad idea, which... I think we all agree, and I think Kyle said offline, that makes it a great idea. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to actually embarrass myself. I wanted to, like, appear like I was in on the fun, you know, like, kind of embarrassing myself. And I was like, well, what if I actually embarrass myself? Um, that would be <laughs> And we were just like, yes, I know. But I looked it up. <laughs> like, bar- best bar- ball bar- is just when you take the best players. Um, you don't pay any attention to ADP. You don't pay any attention to game theory. You don't pay any attention to stacking. You don't pay any attention to schedule, things of that nature. You just take the best players, so I'm ready. Yeah, it'd be chess if we were trying to like do strategy and stuff. Yeah, I don't know how to play chess. Don't yeah, expect much strategy from me, just to be honest. Uh, if you know chess, I'm sure that probably doesn't even help you in this. You know, <laughs> I do know chess. I know how to that. I will soon be losing to my six year old daughter. Um, so chess. you don't know chess? You started. <laughs> no, I mean kids. Kids, while being so dumb, are just so smart too. Um, Can we so everything? Can... Can we change this screen share to just a chess, an online chess yeah. game? I think <laughs> yeah, we're uh, friends with chess. Going... Does that still exist? Fuck, you, anybody remember chess. this? Anybody else hear about this? Friends with chess. <laughs> For those who don't know, the the winner of uh, the the best ball mania two last year was a is a chess coach. So oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> makes a lot of sense so, actually. Do, well, let's talk about the for those who are only listening to, on the podcast version. This looks like a twelve. This is a twelve teamer, right? We're what we're twelve team here. This twelve teamers, and, uh, eighteen rounds, thirty second timer. Um, yeah, this is called the Puppy. It's a five dollar tournament. It has seventy five k up top to first place. The way you win that is you advance into uh, through the first fourteen weeks of the season. You win your twelve team league. Then you advance into a league of league winners. You got to win that in week fifteen. Then you got to win another one of those in week sixteen, and then you get into week seventeen. And that's really the tournament. We're basically entering some qualifying tournaments to get us into a week 17 tournament where all the prize money basically is going to be in that one week. You've got to finish first among all of those remaining teams to win 75K as the top prize. So we legitimately, despite Pat's comments earlier, care tremendously about the schedule and week 17 (laughs) is a big deal. Yeah, week 17... I have it's a spreadsheet arguably... pulled up with all of the matchups for week uh, 17, 16, 15, because you need to win. Uh, I believe I have the numbers pulled up. You need to win in week 15, another 12 person league that you get jumped into with all the original winners, an 18 person, an 18 person. And then the final round is um, 115 person final. So not that big, but definitely like tournament style final. You also still got to get there, though. So, I mean, yeah. the point of drafting good players still still applies. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. it still does apply. Yeah, you still want to advance your teams at a high rate. But a uh, friend of the pod, Pete Overzet, had a really good video that came out today on just explaining, like, the expected value of Week 17 versus the rest of the tournament. If you think about all of these as, as separate contests in a way, uh, you know, that Week 17 expected value is, like, you know, it's, like, 500 times greater than, <laughs> than the wow. original – week one through 14 contests. So you really do want to optimize for having a team that if you like basically win the lottery to get to the lottery, then you want to have this bullet that's very live. Gotcha. And we're here to comment on the picks, heckle the picks if necessary. And I would say guide also, right? Yeah, I would say assist He's got a week 17 spreadsheet. I think we're, we're going to help, like especially Corrine and Kyle. I'm going to moderate. Corrine and Kyle are going to try to help you out maybe. I just cases. double checked to make sure there weren't any buys in week 15. There are buys like absurdly late this year. I think there's buys up until week 13 or something nutty. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> I'm sharing my inner monologue. Um, so we're gonna get we're gonna get started here shortly. How Crane? When do we want? Uh, Pat yeah, let's let's, uh, let's jump in. So yeah. I, cl- I click okay. enter. Click, click enter. enter. I paid now, for this with uh, five man's coins, so here we go. Enter. I don't have man's coins that gotten that bad up. lately. That's, yeah, yeah that, I know the market's up. down, but that's that's rough for a man's coin. <laughs> Allow <laughs> notifications. No, I don't need any notifications for this one. Or do I? Classic go. last words. I don't need notifications. I mean, I'll be checking. I my would phone. allow. I would allow, buddy. You allow? Where are these going to be popping up? 
Like, are they just, like, popping up all day, like, trying to get me into, like, other puppies or something? It's just or... status updates on the draft. All right, whatever. Hey, we we, we are going to try to... Thought. We're going to try to call out as many picks as we can, right? Uh, if you're listening on audio and you're not watching a video, we're not going to be able to get every pick because they're going to go really fast. But so we'll I just do, I hit you... turn autopilot on, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, laughing a little too hard at myself here. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, who are we taking here? Um, we don't. You will find out your draft slot once we um, get all filled and we're waiting on one person. No, I'm 1-1. I'm 1-1. One, one. One. One, one. Um, that's it does. That it is. Yeah, the way this uh, UI works, it, it puts you at the top, like you have the one on one before the draft start, which always, you know, it's it, it makes you a little excited, but then you realize. To me, Ezekiel Elliott or give me death at one one. I think <laughs> that's kind of what I'm thinking. All right. Well, 2016 called. They want the road to Pat back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pat. I, I knew you hadn't been drafting, but I didn't realize you took last year off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the year uh, before that. Um, let's see who. He else? actually got the one one. <laughs> yep. There we go. Wow. So, oh wow, we, you did. Who are we taking Boom. then at 24? Um, yeah, so question. are we like 100% sold and Jonathan Taylor is the one one? Like, I could field an argument for Christian McCaffrey. Uh, like, he does have the best fantasy season ever. McCaffrey has a buy. In, Taylor's buy is in week 14. Is this even a joke? Like, it's what? not when the tournament, the next rolling tournament You're starts, so path. it's not a big deal. But what, what, first... I'm saying is, what is the deal with the schedule this year? What is the deal? Anybody else following this? Um... <laughs> Um, are you trying to sell some sort, of, uh, some sort of sketch show where it's just you doing impressions that anyone my age wouldn't get? Yeah, I my dear Leno but... is not feeling very good today either. It's you know who Leno off. is, Kyle. Come no, on. I know who Leno is. And I know Pat's impression of Leno is definitely an impression of an impression. It is. Maybe one more of <laughs> yeah. Leno. Right. It's three removed. It yeah. is. Uh, it's at least three it's removed. Blurred, right, very dressed. blurred. Oh, yeah. Am I taking Taylor or should I, am I taking? Probably, yeah. Or should I, I, I maximize upside and go McCaffrey? It's I would take Taylor. PPR, so I I think Taylor's your your best bet. Go. Yeah, Taking I think him. don't overthink this right. first one. We can He's overthink done. a lot of picks later. Hopefully, I know also, how to if use you're this draft software, if you're going to be drafting more of these, I, I do think it makes sense to draft Taylor when you have the chance because he's not falling to to 103 or you know rarely even 102. So you'll probably get McCaffrey if you want him at 102, 103. That makes and sense. McCaffrey went second. Just um, for anyone. What is this red shield and someone's are they are uh, oh, highly experienced? Well, I'm screwed. Um, oh wow, you have a you have an icon if you're highly experienced. E huh? David Berg. I think that's one of Karain's aliases. Um is highly experienced. Yeah, Karain does seem like he's I, he's looking at the screen very intently, like he might actually be drafted. So Karain was claiming he hasn't done that I, many I did, of I did think about jumping in. I, I will say I did. You think actually about should have. In. Um, that would have been amazing. You're like, you're like, you know, like bum hunting a DFS, trying to find like you know, the good cash yeah. game action. Pat, uh, like other Pat Darty, jumps into a draft. And you're like, I guess I could throw one in. <laughs> I was worried I'd be like way too quiet on the podcast. This past yeah, like, for sure. Who should I for take sure. here? I'm like, not the guy I want. Bum hunt. You say bum hunting is that part of the best ball nomenclature? You want to be in a league with all the bums? I mean, like, I think it might even like originate in poker days. Yeah, that uh, makes I sense. Don't... Well, the guy with the highly experienced shield just timed out, actually. Oh, let's go. Um, okay. If only this Jamar is not Chase. a good time for your opponents to time out, though, because uh, you're, they're getting an elite player anyways. Like, once we yeah. get someone who suffers an unfortunate injury in July, the next two days will be great to get in for timeouts. So, Crane, who are, like, the people getting Week 17 boosts this year so far? Um, well, the, the games – there's a couple games that I think – are really exciting and kind of obvious stacking um, candidates. The Bills and the Bengals play each other. Oh my God. That's so that, that's a potential shootout. Um, you've got the Chiefs and the Chiefs Broncos. Denver, yeah. yeah, that's a big one. Uh, LA, we've got the LA Bowl, the Chargers and the Rams. Oh, wow. Which could be pretty fun. And then there's like some kind of gross ones um, the Falcons and Don't the do uh, Cardinals play Don't each say other. That. I knew you. I knew so, you were going to say gross. I knew you were going to say Falcons right after gross. No, I'm well, positive about it. So Pat, correct me if I'm wrong. Let me game <laughs> theory right. really comes in here. I want to zig when everyone else is zagging. That's why I'm loading up on Jets and Seahawks. Just loading up for the Week 17 Jets Seahawks game because um, that's how you win. I mean, right? that is like the the Seahawks and the Lions oh. was the game last year. 
<laughs> right? And you had the Rashad Penny explosion with, with he was on the winning team. So Amon Ross St. Brown went off against him too. So if you stack that game, the weird thing was you couldn't stack that game with Russell Wilson because you did not make it far enough if you drafted Russell Wilson. But if you had that as like a secondary stack, which you could have, people were thinking about this. This isn't crazy. If you just had like, oh, I drafted, uh, you know, I drafted Rashad. I don't know who you were drafting first. I guess you were drafting Amon Ross St. Brown first. And you're like, well, you know, if I'm splitting hairs, let me take the guy who, if Penny goes for 150, his team's definitely winning. The guy who's losing, the wide receiver, not a bad pick. So I took that you great point, Karine, that that was like, it won the Millie Maker on like multiple websites for best ball and also won some of the Millie Maker in DFS, the Penny, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown stack. So Karine, Kyle, let me- I'm seven picks away. Should I lean into receiver upside? Should I take DeAndre Swift no matter what, if he falls, even though I already have a running back? Or do I want to try, like, even with the downside with, like, A.J. Brown or, like, Tyree Kill, do I want to maximize my upside? What, and what, 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 what am I pausing doing? real quick while you guys think about that answer, I'm gonna just going to quickly reset the pick so far really fast. Cup, Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Derrick Henry, Travis Kelsey, Stephon Diggs, Austin Eckler, Najee Harris went 10th. Joe Mixon, Dalvin Cook, Aaron Jones, Leonard Fournette, Devontae Adams, C.D. Lamb, Mark Andrews, Tyree Kill, and Mike Evans gets us caught up. So and McCaffrey uh, went second. Standard. What do I do? I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> we still well, got uh, four or five picks till you're I say up. Swift have... or A.J. Brown or T. Um, or I do I do T, Saquon? Yeah. Is this, this time it counts for Saquon, Pat. We were kind of all in on Saquon's like legendary potential last year and uh, it didn't happen. Well, if you want to talk about the correlation, the Colts play the Giants week 17. So maybe we got J.T. Rowland, Saquon. <laughs> Catching dump offs coming All back. Right. He's playing a ton of reps at receiver in training camp. I don't know if I saw that. I did Twitter. the blurb today. Okay. Um, yeah. I was, I wanted to make sure we had it up before I mentioned well, it. Saquon's the in the queue. Down. He's in the queue. Or should I do T or AJ Brown? I want you guys to just pick for me. Um, well, you're going to have two picks here because the way this works yeah. is it's called a snake draft. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we, should, oh, we, should, yeah. we should clarify now. How does that work, uh, Karain? What if you yeah, talk explain, us through the mechanics? That's amazing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> just edit that out. <laughs> nope. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm totally. I'm, no, no. Okay, I'm which receiver? Eight. I'm taking Saquon. I'm I gonna like take it. Saquon, or should I stack it with receivers? What should I do? I'm totally fine with you taking. Oh, oh my god, he's gone. Saquon got uh, all right, Saquon's gone. At that point, so, then with Saquon gone, I double tap the receivers here. We got like such. A, I, I assume a massive edge at running back, just having the one on one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so also, are, are we double tapping T and AJB or are we mixing be, in? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of a no brainer, right? Uh, yeah. You probably star one of the guys because just yeah. in case yeah, you tell no, yeah, yeah, seven seconds. Yep. No, hold on. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to star Rondale Moore real quick. I've, um, I've been there. Swift, yeah, Camara, Debo, and Saquon were the 20. I missed my pick. Picks. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, you starred him. That's so right, Pat got AJ Brown. There we go. AJ Brown and T Higgins. T Higgins, 25. Yep, and I think there's, I would consider a pretty notable tier drop off after these two receivers right here. Then you're going to Keenan Allen, who probably has a high floor, but like, I am not afraid of Keenan Allen destroying the league in like that Cooper Cup breakout fashion, right? Just, I'm not, I don't see that happening. Mike Williams, I'm also wouldn't be concerned for the reason he has Keenan Allen there. You could maybe argue like a Waddle or DJ Moore, but I think their odds of doing that relative to T Higgins and AJ Brown's odds, who like, I really think those are some of the best receivers in the NFL, even if they play in not ideal circumstances. I would bet on their talent plus okay circumstances. I don't play for the Jags. Is this what where are we been, guys have been seeing Pittman go? Uh, Twenty six. Is that a, is that a typical situation we're dealing? Is that what you expect to see? He that's probably a little bit early, but he tends to be in this next group with Keenan Allen and Mike okay. Williams, uh, Jalen Waddle, Deontay Johnson. Uh, DJ Moore, that that kind of group. Got it. What and do we think Mike, about Mike the Moore. difference? Sorry, Matt. Um, nope. Between AJ Brown, does AJ Brown still have the same ceiling that he did in Tennessee? We know the floor is lower now. Um, in this run first, he was literally the run heaviest team in the league after Week Six last year, like by far. Uh, so we know the floor has decreased for AJ Brown. Does he still have the same ceiling? We think, or does he not even have the same ceiling? I think his ceiling's higher. You've got a team that was quite pass happy, happy to begin the season. And then they pivoted hard to the run. Uh, I don't think they'll go like super pass heavy, like they did to start 2021, but that probably represents like more what they were hoping to be, um, I, you know, as evidenced by the fact that they just traded for AJ Brown. 
and, and gave him a ton of money too. Yep. And I mean, like they had a starting three wide receiver set of Devontae Smith, a rookie, Jalen Rager, a bust, and Quez Watkins, like a totally fine depth guy, but you know, not like a star at all. So if you're now going to having Rager basically off the field and replacing him with AJ Brown, that should lead to more passing attempts. I think it, it creates a scenario where you could have them not be like a, a really pass heavy team, but they they're like slightly pass first, like maybe more like the Colts or something. Slightly run first, I mean. After not after saying I was not gonna catch us up on every pick, I now suddenly feel obligated to. So I'm gonna do it. Pittman went twenty six, Keenan Allen, Josh Allen, Nick Chubb, Mike Williams was thirtieth, Mahomes, Hollywood Brown, Javante Williams, Kyle Pitts, DK Metcalf at thirty five, DJ Moore, Darren Waller, Cortland Sutton just went thirty eighth. How are you keeping up on these, by the way? I'm uh <laughs> Are you, are you in the draft? Are you in my? Are you in the draft? Uh, yeah, you I got the right slot. Karain was gonna get, but um, um, so we're eight picks you away. Can go to the board, by the way, uh, Pat. Okay, I'll do that. So here's the deal, though, folks. We we had the one one. We took Jonathan Taylor, then we double tapped the receivers with AJ Brown and T Higgins. I kind of want to take Cam Akers if he somehow falls. I just feel like tr- you know the truly monstrous three down upside okay. there, or my. My, or my testosterone level is just like coursing way too high to be considered. Well, that Both. can't be it. Both Trust are somehow true. <laughs> <laughs> I totally like I Cam Akers fun. going like, I feel like he has like the same sort of breakout potential we talked about with like, uh, you know, DeAndre Swift last year, probably two years ago, it would have been like Miles Sanders. These guys like, they do have pretty good three down profiles. And there's, for all of them, have had kind of a, you know, some sort of big work where for DeAndre Swift, it's probably plays for the Lions. For Cam Akers, like, dude, I don't know if he'll ever be the K makers we were thinking we would get coming in the NFL, but like, that's the kind of upside I'm totally fine betting on in a, in a tournament of what is it? Like how many, like tens of thousands of people. Oh, boy, Gabe Davis just went. There he goes. 45 Gabe I think Davis. This is like a hundred. I think this is, yeah, this is a 111,000 people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> more normal amount of people. Uh, so what, what are we thinking here? Strategy wise? Uh, I feel like I, God, I've, I want to like double up on receiver again, but am I getting or should I? Lamar has legendary upside. Oh, damn, Cam Akers, Akers just went. So um, I have no idea what to do. Well, while you're thinking so about you, that, sorry, Corrine, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I think you're kind of between two strategies. You could take another running back. You probably don't want to take two more running backs. We take, should I take, take Etienne or Dobbins? We're going to take another running back. I would take Etienne personally. So okay. Then who's next, Karain? Uh Then you've got, I think, a receiver, and you you can also probably cool it on running back for a while. Yeah, basically chill, have chill. like a, a two running back. Like, a should we bet on Amari Cooper finally having a random career year in Cleveland, or should I just bet on a thousand Deontay Johnson targets and a conservative Steelers offense, or should I bet on Terry Mc... Ter- Terry McLaurin's not going to get? I have fifteen seconds, by the way. Well, you can uh, – oh, we already took ETN. I think Deontay Johnson. I think the dude's get a ton of targets and now gets a quarterback upgrade. Like, that's that's all you need to tell me. I just needed someone to have any preference whatsoever. And <laughs> that's what we did. Yeah, we I've been finding myself – I've been finding myself doing, like, pretty heavy uh, Pittsburgh stacks. Just, like, I, I really do think Ben Roethlisberger, he, he wasn't it, Chief. He was bad for this past <laughs> two or so years, two or three years. And, we, like – the guys who get a lot of targets and are even modestly efficient when playing under bad circumstances and they have the potential for an upgrade. To me, that's a spot you kind of either want to go all in on or say like, no, it won't make a difference. And, and I wouldn't take any of them at ADP if I didn't think Kenny Pickett could be an upgrade, a big one over Ben Rosberg. Like, man, I, I'd say it. I watched football, right? I know I don't watch a lot of football, but I watched Ben Rosberg. That was not good. And Kenny Pickett is not that. I, I don't think he's going to set the league on fire, right? But one, we're bad at – we're very bad at projecting quarterbacks, right? We, we do Justin Herbert. He's fine. I don't know if I'd take him that high. And he turns out to be the best quarterback, right? So I do think there's, like, a lot of upside going to just a quarterback that isn't Ben. And, it, and the quarterback is the thing we're really not great at figuring out who we're going to be the best. I guess the only one weird thing with Deontay Johnson – I don't think the Steelers would do this. They kind of just ride people to the wheels fall off. But, like – if they've already de- determined they're not going to extend him. Like, will they make his role smaller? But that doesn't seem likely, actually. 
Picks 39 through 55, rapid fire style. Justin Herbert, Jalen Waddle, Jerry Judy, James Conner, Zeke, sorry, Pat, George Kittle, Gabriel <laughs> literally Davis, never sorry to all Zeke, of us. By the way. Uh, Gabriel Davis, Cam Akers, Brees Hall, ETN, that was you, Pat, Deontay, that was you, uh, Terry McLaurin, Chris Godwin, Rashad Bateman, Amari Cooper, Juju Smith-Schuster, and DeMont Nation himself, David Montgomery, at 55. So one thing I'll say is, you know, the Deontay – Johnson case is a good one. I think uh, it would have been better probably if, if you're taking Johnson to actually have taken Dobbins because they play Baltimore week 17. You get a little correlation built in. Currently this team has no stacks and no bringbacks in week 17. So that is something to focus on going forward. Any well, tiebreakers. A lot, us time, a lot of time though. Well, Lots here's we're 12 picks away crane. We've focused so far on good players Maybe it's time to take a not good player and Jalen Hurts and stack him with AJ Brown. Um, or if he makes Pat, that. I'm, uh, Karain, anyone who anyone who is not a best ball aficionado, what do you what what do you mean when you say bring back? So right, so bring back would be uh, you know you've got Pittsburgh going, or you, we have this Eagle stack potentially lining up. Should I do AJ an Brown Eagle stack or a Burrow stack with T? Should I do a quarterback stack here for sure? Nine picks away. You honestly could double tap quarterback and get both stacks in place. And I think at the prices you would get these guys, that'd be totally fine. You're done at quarterback. Get that quarterback upside. It'd be a pretty nice uh, round. But the bring back would then yeah. be getting a bill for your Cincinnati stack because they play Cincinnati plays the bills in week 17. Oh, like you yeah. would in DFS, you, you might do a stack and then have someone from the opposite game. You're betting on a shootout. Well, I'm looking for gotcha. I'm searching for Zach Moss real quick. <laughs> keep yeah, keep searching. Scroll. You gotta scroll. You gotta keep <laughs> scrolling. <laughs> that was a joke. Just so we're clear. Um, Pop it in the queue, Pat. Uh, Lamar Jackson, fifty-six. Dobbins, fifty-seven. Brandon Cooks, fifty-eight. Darnell Mooney, Allen Robinson. Kyler oh, Murray, damn Russell it! There Wilson, goes Joe Burrow. <laughs> Antonio Gibson and Elijah Mitchell was the sixty-fourth pick. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna get now. Uh, one second was. Joe Burrow gone. I think maybe our best bet. I'm trying to remember. I think it's Brandon Allen. I think I need to go Brandon Allen here in the sixth round. You, you know what I'm enjoying about this from Pat Doherty is that we're learning that when he drafts, he just yells things out. Like he, he's, <laughs> he's very stream of consciousness. It. He's very raw. He's, you know, it's, it's raw motion coming out. I'm enjoying it. Cut. <laughs> what the heck do I do if Hertz goes? I don't, uh, is it, would it be Traylon time? Um, but the, the, or, Devonte, would, would I want to take Devonte Smith? Like, is there any weird benefit to having receivers on the same team, Crane? I mean, I there guess is, it, yeah, yeah, there is. I'm, like, you want to have correlation. So, you yeah, know, yeah, if yeah. this happens to be a, you're already betting. I don't know if that was enough of a correlation to count, but I guess the correlation is just with hoping for a high-scoring game, obviously. Yeah, and, and a productive Eagles passing game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what correlation is. <laughs> and there goes Jalen Hurts. So, yeah, we lost our, we lost our Hurts. Um, we're two picks I mean, away. Here, but I would we still, still have say to... Devontae Smith is a good pick, even though you don't have Hurts, because yeah. hopefully you're building in stacks with whatever quarterback you do end up with. So what are we thinking here? Oh, Tom Brady? <laughs> uh... I wouldn't take Tom Brady because we're not going to have any of his receivers. They've all yeah. gone, I assume. Um... Uh, I mean, it's fine. Like, there are certainly teams, like like we saw the a lot of the Burrow teams got killed off last year because he got he – got, like well, Devonte Smith just went, and now I'm on the clock, and we have no ideas. You I mean, do, we have uh, Elijah Moore and Traylon Burks because both of those guys have quarterbacks who are quite easy to stack. Yeah. It's probably a three quarterback build now. Yep, <laughs> lovely. Um, more. I'm just gonna scroll through here. I've got more in the queue. So Nine he'll seconds. Auto. He'll get auto. He'll get auto. You could do Ayuk if you want and try Ooh, to get. I actually want Ayuk much more than. Oh shit! Or you got. Heck. Uh, <laughs> Adam, do edit that one. Uh, I wanted really Ayuk like much Ayuk more. more Burks, dude, I would take. I don't. I wanted I like, Ayuk much more and Elijah more. But are we taking Ayuk or Traylon Burks here with 15 seconds remaining, Pat? Well, the, the Ayuk play, you're you're playing. Right, Lance hasn't gone, so you're you're playing that you hope you get Lance right, back. Here we go. Ayuk it is, folks. Uh, interesting. I, I man, I don't know if I'd be taking the third pass catching option on like the league's run heaviest team, but. So, the team is bad now, um, for the record. So, well, should we start this over? Should we start over? A good dry run. <laughs> cut it. Just cut it. Run. So, so far, uh, no stacks. 
I will say Brandon Ayuk went nuts down the stretch last year. Like people are, he was like a wide receiver one, like almost like the final eight or nine weeks. I think, I think he was like top 10 or he wasn't a wide receiver one in fantasy. <laughs> he did play a really big role whenever they yeah. started doing Debo as a running back. Like when he, he was were... like top 10 in yards, I think like the final nine or t- like nine or 10 weeks of the season, like something totally crazy. But I totally agree with your Ayuk. Uh, like this offense was already one of the most run heavy. It's going to get considerably run heavier. Pat, do you want to read off our team again? Because we haven't we talked about the rest of the picks. We haven't read off our team. It was today. Jonathan Taylor, AJ Brown, T. Higgins, Travis Etienne, Deontay Johnson, auto pick Elijah Moore. He was in the queue, and Brandon Ayuk. And the last 10, 12 picks or so, Joe Burrow, Michael Thomas, Amon Ross St. Brown, Drake London. Jalen Hurts, Josh Jacobs, Devontae Smith, Elijah Moore, Brandon Ayuk, Moore and Ayuk were Pat, Tom Brady, Matthew Stafford, Traylon Burks, DeAndre Hopkins, and Dalton Schultz, and then Hunter Renfro just went at 79. Can someone explain to me the Hunter Renfro fascination from like the sharper crowd? I I'm not I won't have a single Hunter Renfro <laughs> team, I don't think. It's half point PPR, so that does make it tough. Like, is he gonna be at all involved in the red zone. I know he, he ha- kind of has had a red zone role, but Devontae Adams there now, it's, I don't know, it's hard for me to, to imagine that. And like, I guess he can be kind of the Wes Walker is the idea. And they they'll probably will play more uh, 11 personnel than they did last year. They were pretty like heavy into two and sometimes three tight end sets. So he'll be on the field more, but it, it seems pricey to me. So what are we thinking philosophically through seven picks? We have two running backs and five receivers can we? Can I not risk missing Trey Lance at this point? Do I have to get Trey Lance? I think I you should take I, Trey Lance if he's there. Yeah, have to is um, like a, a strong uh, word for it. But yes, I do think like that's kind of we have to stack ask. Kenny Pickett with Deontay Johnson this round, right, Kyle? <laughs> yeah, right I, now. I'm doing it. I, I literally am going to have a lot of that team. Like I'm not, uh, you know, I'm just, kind of feeling is miles Sanders. Is that enough of a correlation with AJ Brown? That's I'm a good of, one. Yeah. You're yeah, betting on the Eagles offense. One. Yeah. Um, I'm sure neither one of Pat, them will be gone in 10 picks. Pat, you've got the hang of this whole thing now. I mean, you've really you've got this dialed in. So what are we thinking? Philosophically though? five receivers, two running backs and no correlating players yet. Yeah, you don't have a single correlated player and you don't have any players from from teams that play each other in week 17. So so far, but this is just uh just not what you want to do. Well it's never love of the game. C plus. Has anyone C+. heard of love of the game around here? <laughs> hey, uh we are we are I think borderline halfway ish home, maybe not quite, but we're gonna take a very quick break. And this is just a reminder if you don't have the NBC Sports Predictor app powered by points bet, go and download it now. The contests are free. And easy to play, and you have a shot to win thousands by predicting what will happen in the NBA playoffs on the PGA Tour and NASCAR circuit. We also have a special contest Tuesday and Thursday called Battle of the Bets, where you can agree or disagree with our experts for a shot to collect some cash. And we're back. Uh, Pick 87 just went off the board. That was Miles Sanders. TJ Hawkinson went 88th. And, uh, yeah, we've got Pat Darty with about a C C letter grade. Is that that fair? Too, Too generous? I think that's fair. Like, I don't think we've made that's any fair. bad picks in within their own individual places in the draft and even our roster construction. It's just that, like, uh, we probably will be forced to sort of bend to finding correlations throughout, not just even week 17, but you also have to make it there through, you know, 15, 16. Uh, See, so yeah, I think we'll kind of be bending to the will of that soon enough. And what you're doing here, uh, Pat, is your your starring players that I understand why you're starring like these quarterbacks for later in the draft, but you. You do risk timing out and selecting. I know. I got to get him out of here, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Trey Lance just went. So we have no one starred. What the heck do we do, Corrine? Um, And we're two picks away from ourselves here. I think Dallas Goddard would be. I was going to say, Goddard, is this the play here? Yeah. Or should we do. Should we do. Oh, Kenneth Walker's gone. I'm like, should we do Tyler Lockett and Kenneth Walker? Sky Moore. Oh, we've got Garrett it. Wilson coming up. We could do uh, Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, Zach Wilson. He just went, I think. Yeah. Why would I say that? We got to do Goddard, I think, because you know we don't have a tight end yet. Uh, and you gotta, you gotta fill every position, guys. First, in order. Um, yeah, in order. Um, <laughs> That's <so>. I, mean. <laughs> I do love Tony Pollard. Uh, I was gonna say Pollard. Uh, should we just do it? Uh, yeah, we've gotten that Burks pick in there. Yeah, one thing I uh, 
have been interested in is uh, Kareem Hunt. Like, I feel like we were drafting him in like the fifth round last year and nothing has changed, right? Garrett Wilson, by the way, is actually gone. Yeah, he went 95. Are we just going to auto, are we gonna auto pick Pollard? Is that the play here? I would take um, Kareem Hunt over Tony Pollard because I think you basically have the same proposition, but more of a chance to get points in weeks that the starter isn't. More of a chance to get points. With this team, I'd rather take. Pollard because you you have the two guys already. All right, Pollard. I mean, I didn't draft. I don't know We're who it was to, on. You, okay, it was you, on. You took Hunt. Uh, Kareem, why would you <laughs> want Pollard there? Because you already have Taylor and ETN, so I feel like I'm okay going for the bigger swing. With you don't Pollard. think like if Nick Chubb goes down, Kareem Hunt is roughly the same size swing? I don't because they okay. have, they also have Dearness Johnson yeah. who is at OTAs right now, and uh, they yeah. drafted Jerome Ford. So I think there'd still probably be a committee there. Sure. I don't think Pollard would be like an every down player, but like I think he would be pretty clearly the the like lead back. What I, if I Kareem think Pollard Hunt gets would be traded. Like a, Am I just totally screwed if he gets traded? Yeah, I mean, not where the Chiefs. They'll probably take over the whole Dude. backfield. Oh man, I think I think the team's so, done. By the way. So uh, Tony Pollard went 100th, uh, Tyler Lockett 101, Christian Watson 102, Chase Claypool just went 103. Do you guys like uh, Karain and Kyle? Do you like drafting at a turn in, in one of these things? Or does it not really matter to you? I like it when it's the 101. <laughs> I actually literally just do because it's easier to plan ahead. Like I don't like having to like six picks between my picks is like the worst feeling or whatever. 12 picks between my picks, is like the worst feeling uh, yeah. as opposed to the whole 24. Like, I just think it is literally easier to like pay attention and plan ahead. I will say though, right. too, though, if you get like too hung up on a plan and then they go like two or three fi- picks before with a 30 second timer, you kind of, you end up auto drafting Elijah Moore sometimes. To that point, uh, Chris Olave was probably the pick instead of Kareem Hunt. Because you have completed a Philly stack of sorts. You don't have Hurts, but you have A.J. Brown and Dallas Goddard. And so getting that bring back on the Saints, who they play Week 17, would have been nice. Do I need to get Matt Ryan this next go-around now? We have zero quarterbacks, and do I need to correlate someone with Jonathan Taylor? We are entering the 10th round, and what quarterbacks do we have available to us? If you That's could uh, read them off. Tab over there. It's, it's Captain the Kirk. Matt Ryan's uh, ADP is like uh, 60 picks from now. So yeah, I, I don't deep think ball that. aficionado Tua Tagovailoa. Um, not good at football player Justin Fields. Ouch. Trevor <laughs> Lawrence. I mean, correlate Trevor Lawrence with yeah. Uh, that's a, that's a legit one. Right. Plus they play the Texans week seventeen. Could just right. roll them. I bet. I kind of say I'm a little disturbed. That you have the entire week seventeen schedule memory. Do you know any of the week one matchups? Okay. <laughs> no. I why would I say. memorize those? <laughs> It just Dude, occurred to me. Your job requires knowing about week one. <laughs> you have the whole no, week 17. No, week 17 is all I need. You know how long we are from week one? We're months yeah. out from week one. I'll worry about week one in September, dude. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, all right, so we're, it's Trevor Lawrence or bust kind of here, I think. Yeah, but I don't know that you have to make it happen this yeah, we'd round, be like right. 20. Well, to... what pick are we at? I mean, uh, uh, well, yeah, he'd be about 30. No, he'd only be about 20 ahead of ADP. You know what just occurred to me? I, I've noticed that every time you mention someone, they tend to go, Pat. I, I don't know. know if that's just the timing, but I have an alternate theory, which is that Karain actually is drafting. He said he wasn't. <laughs> he said he's in this thing, and it's he's playing like next-level chess on us. He's just like totally acting like he's not involved, and he's just taking people from you just to entertain himself. I'm telling you what, I'm That's doing Lawrence. Uh, what other I, positions do you have available? Should I do should I do double tap quarterback? Should I do Kirk Cousins and then but there's no one to really get for the Vikings later? I guess I could get Irv Smith, but you'll be okay at quarterback. All right. You can get Zach Wilson. You can get Matt Ryan. Okay, well, okay, let's see here. Who here's top of the queue? James Cook, Melvin Gordon, Tyler Boyd, um, Jameson Williams, who I love, Penny. Rondale, who I joked about earlier, <laughs> Kenny Galladay, Kirk Cousins. There goes Rondale. Um, if James Cook makes it, that didn't. would be nope. No, he gone. Nope. Neither did Jameson. All right. I think it's Trevor Lawrence time. I think it's Trevor Lawrence time. Could you do Kenny Galladay and come back for the few rounds? ADP. I, I'd be fine with Kenny Galladay, Galladay and then coming Ooh. back for uh, Daniel Jones. I've yeah, been. I, I like that. Yeah. Is there any – what about pairing Tyler Boyd with T. Higgins? I'd be yeah, fine with that. that. That makes a lot of sense. Which is I better, think, though. Which is better. 
well, you <laughs> we can, can do, do both, both, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. <sighs> Man, really? <laughs> yeah, you know, there's no chance that Trevor Lawrence is still going to be there. Like, how important is this quarterback? We're gonna have Daniel Jones. We don't need him. Yeah, we're we're setting up other uh, correlation right. with the Kenny Galladay pick. Okay, we'll do Boyd and Galladay. You're letting Jesus take the wheel. I'm letting my best ball Jesus take the wheel. Oh, and we we talked about that at the beginning of the thing. That's our Jonathan Taylor versus the Giants stack. Uh, exactly right. the way we drew it up. Okay, I will say on Kenny out. Galladay. So we just went with Tyler Boyd and Kenny Galladay back to back. Like basically, unless Kenny Galladay's like leg has been removed, there's no way he could be worse than he was last year. And that we keep Denny and I keep talking about when I talked about this last offseason that Daniel Jones never throws deep, but when he does throw deep, he's actually good. Yeah. And that maybe if it's actually like schemed and designed better this year, he can be a better deep ball passer and actually have some chemistry with Kenny Galladay, who's one of the best deep receivers in the NFL. But Kenny Galladay, though, wins in like tight quarters. And that is where. Daniel Jones, uh, literally. Daniel Jones, who's going to be on this team, apparently, um, literally never targets people. Where, in deep. where yeah. is Daniel Jones ADP from where we are now? I think we got a while to wait. I, I am of the belief that uh, what we saw from Daniel Jones, really his whole career, is at least not maximizing his potential. I don't think he's that good. He also has like pretty horrific pocket awareness. He's not like dialed in at any part of the field particularly but the fact that he has had i don't know one of the worst runs of coaching we've seen in recent memory for like a three to four year stretch and now gets what i think is one of the best offensive minds uh in the nfl like i'm willing to bet on that as a like a very potential like long outlier situation crane hear me but he runs crane hear me out on this next this next round we're 16 picks away trevor lawrence and evan ingram Back to back. I mean, I, I think so, that's a good I was, move. I was joking, yeah. but on, I, I'm still probably too early. On Evan him. Ingram's. We, no, no, yeah, <laughs> definitely don't do it now. <laughs> what but about Lawrence good, now, though? That's a good idea. Does he have yeah. to do Lawrence? Is now? Lawrence an auto pick if he makes it these next 15 picks? Yeah, I think Lawrence makes sense if he comes back. Tim Patrick, Nicole Hardman, Jacoby Myers, Mike Gusecki were the last four, if you're wondering what kind of kind of territory we're this, in right now. hopefully this is fun to listen to if you're a podcast listener by the way uh hey folks <laughs> just me drafting my team just yelling out random player names um and random words oh david boston just went a little early for david boston here so that was <laughs> one yeah, steroids ronald jones rojo pick 130 Karain, just for you yep everyone get up for ronald jones but now we know Corrine is not drafting, actually. That just proved it. That is a good unless point. that's well, his unless team. That's yeah, I was going to say that could be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Someone check the rest of that team. Check it proved there. nothing. It proved nothing. <laughs> um, Justin Fields is pretty easy to backdoor stack. Um, By the way, I'm putting just, Zach just Wilson he's not in good the queue at, football, at but, this point. Um, this, this really this is not good at football stuff with Justin Fields. It really hurts hurts my soul, guys. It's hard it to is hear. a shame. Well, you can get Byron Pringle and Bruce Trevor Jones Lawrence just went, by the way. Um, look, it's that's... fine. I'm not upset. <laughs> I'm a little don't put it. Don't down. put it in the newspaper. And then I'm upset. Is it time to stack Matt Ryan? Is no, ADP's 166. No. We're on pick 135. I'll be pick 144. Well, keep in mind, like that, in this 1100,000 tournament, you're going to be 1100, uh, 100,000 person tournament. You don't want to like you. You want to keep pushing it and trying to make like the best possible team. So you don't want to hypothetically like capitulate and just take Matt Ryan ahead of ADP. That does make, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, like there's going to no. be a team that got Matt Ryan as a value and their team will look like your team, but you will just, it, it will look like you skip one of your picks. You passed it down the road a bit. <laughs> Someone will have a similar team to you, but it would just be better. Right. I, I think like you can reach before. a little bit, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I was saying this uh, before. We even saw like uh, a lot of the obviously you wanted the Bengals because we had like Jamar Chase and T. Higgin explosions down the stretch. But the Bengals teams, speaking from experience, got slaughtered the very first round of the uh, best ball playoffs because Joe Burrow uh, completely just had an awful performance. It was like a seven point performance or something. And the next two weeks, it, they crushed you. So, so you had to just find a way to get through, or you had unstacked. Like, you know, we talked about you still had the correlation between Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins, right? You had to do that type of thing. It's round 12. We're five picks away. We have three running backs, seven receivers, and a tight end. 
Top of the board is Jarvis Landry, Tunyon, Van Jefferson, Naheem Hines. Should I take Naheem Hines? We have John Taylor. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't with Taylor. So that's, there's no advantage to like uh, ensure like in case he gets hurt or something. I, it doesn't matter. Well, I guess. If, you, if Jonathan Taylor gets hurt, you're you're kind of yeah, screwed. Right there. There's going to be yeah. there will be teams with Christian McCaffrey and Naheem Hines who are just burying you. That's what I figured. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Jahan Dotson, Cole Komet, Jalen Tolbert, DJ Shark. Tyler Algier, David Njoku, David Bell, Hunter Henry, KJ. The quarterback Osborne. has dried up, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, this is pretty did, wild. <laughs> did we take Kareem Hunt? Because we do have two Browns players, David Njoku and David Bell, at ADP coming up. Uh, I can also see who they play week 17. That's not. Can, I, can we take David Bell, like please? That. Yeah, let's take David Bell. Should we do David Bell? Can I finally take a quarterback, please? Please let me take a quarterback. I don't know, Pat. I don't know. <laughs> Seems risky. <laughs> We landed on don't reach for Matt Ryan in. a minute. Ago. Oh God, we're on the clock. Uh, we're gonna get David Bell here. Let's go. What should I do for the second pick? Should I do quarterback or you, some other stack? Is Alec Pierce available? Because you could do he, Matt Ryan and Pierce. He should be available. Yeah, he's available. There he is. His ADP is right Ryan here, and then hope to get Pierce later. As a, it's in the next one. So we're actually Guys. taking Matt Ryan here. Yeah, go for it. Just let her rip. Man, Guys, this is awful. We got to let it, it was clear that Pat Doherty wanted to take Matt Ryan so badly. I and mean, we got it. <laughs> yeah. He he was he was been asking for for weeks. Quite literally, point. I don't he think I've Matt ever Ryan. rostered Matt Ryan in redraft fancy. <laughs> when I turned in our rankings, Ray told me is really his only note was that I was too low on Matt Ryan. Did you have him like RB or what what I think I ranked him like he'll never make a difference in a redraft league. <laughs> That sounds like, about right. You know what? That checks out. You know, <laughs> <laughs> having done little thought into it, that checks out. Uh, so we have Matt Ryan now. How are we feeling about Paris Campbell? Because I know mm. this might sound like I saw the the blurb that I wrote that said he caught like eight of uh, twenty four <laughs> targets 24 from Matt Ryan. Oh. But what I'm saying is not that he's going to have what is that a twenty five percent target share. It's that he is healthy and alive, and I know he exists, and he's out on the field now, which has mostly not been true for the past three years. And he's like a pretty good player with the ball in his hands. He literally just cannot get on the field. That does not seem to be the case now. So I think given that it's a highly correlated play with what we have on the team and that like there's a chance he's a good player, I would like to – I'm glad we put him in the queue. But we, we probably but we only have definitely... one more wide receiver pick on this team, though. We have one quarterback who's bad. <laughs> and we have a good enough tight end where we can just take two, but we, we probably need two more running backs. We only have three. So I, I think you got to be careful about which wide receiver you're picking. Cause you only got one left. Let's uh, stack Tyler Algier with Matt Ryan. Am I right? He's on the Falcons still, right? Matt Ryan. Uh, that one In fact, you might have cool. zero left to spend. <laughs> if uh, you might be done at wide receiver, if you want to get to five running backs. Oh boy! Yeah, how many yeah. picks do we have left? We have. Should we do Gainwell? Uh, I like Gainwell. Yeah, that's a we've good got one. Goddard and we have AJ Brown. Jahan Dotson just went pick one fifty three. What's the re- early read on Dotson? Like, has there been any counter movement for Dotson yet? Like, everyone's yeah, totally out on the. There's been some positive beat reports on him. Because like everyone's totally out on the landing spot. Everyone's totally out on the quarterback. But, like, people always ignore maybe the most important thing, which is his insane real-life draft capital. And I didn't know if like, there'd be a sharp movement back towards Jahan Dotson as the summer kind of rolled along. Yeah, he, he's 178 pounds, so he's looking awesome at OTAs. <laughs> oh, boy. Is he really a but so, buck 78? <laughs> yeah, he's a buck 78. You might uh, get the tight ends in here so we can see them, too. So what what did you say, Corrine? How, let, let's go through the roster. How many picks? How many roster spots do we have left? And realistically, position wise, what do we have to do? So we here? have eighteen what? roster spots total to spend. We already have eight wide receivers, on, but we only have one tight end, one quarterback. We need to get. Nope, and Joker just went. Oh come on! That's three picks we're spending between two more quarterbacks and one tight end because you're not. You need to have three quarterbacks if you have Matt Ryan as your first one. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I felt like I'm slamming Matt Ryan, but I'm not, I don't even mean to. It's just, you know, you're going to be competing with two quarterback teams that are like Kyler Murray and Trey Lance. You know, you, you're going to need three. Um, and then you, you do want to get to two tight ends as well, and you only have three running backs. So realistically, you probably should not take another wide receiver. Well, that's Close fine. That tab, Pat. Should we do Should we do Gainwell and Zach Wilson this go-around? I like that. Me too. 
Um, we're seven picks away. I kind of doubt Zach Wilson will make it back to me, unless maybe most teams have satisfied their quarterback needs. Is Zach Wilson in this draft and in general, is Zach Wilson the call over Daniel Jones this year? Crane, you have an opinion? I think I like Daniel Jones. Let's go. Me too. Should we do dimes? Should we do Danny with Danny Dable? He also gets us the correlation with Jonathan Taylor. That's actually really important. We should like not understate the fact that like, if that game goes exactly as the Seattle uh, Detroit game went last year in that just like ugly, fun, bad team week 17 type of stuff, it's the perfect setup for the, I had no idea the Seattle Detroit week 17, 2021 game was the lodestar of all of fantasy. It's uh, seriously, also, I can, I can off the top of my head think of like $3 million that swung. Yeah. So it wanted does, a ton of money. Does this then need to be? Wait, do we decide Daniel Jones and does it need to be Alec Pierce? I feel like you've moved. Well, we're out of receivers, up, he we... said. Crane oh, said no more receivers. Receiver. He's cut off my receiver line of credit. It's tough. And Pierce won anyway, so that help that helps. If you, you could uh, steal we could... running back, but that's Jonathan Taylor, ETN, Kareem Hunt, and like a late round running back is a little little thin. I think you'd rather <laughs> probably go five there. I could, dude. I'd be, I'd be fine with. Four. I, I mean, like, I, I don't know yeah. if it's optimal, right? But I don't. I think it's within like the bounds of reason to go there. I, I, I don't agree know if we like the bounds of reason. Yeah. Also, tight end. Uh, I assume dude, we're not that deep in the draft. Uh, Mo Ali Cox. I'm just throwing it out. You guys should know he's he's a big dude. He's big, and he plays with Matt Ryan. If Kenneth Gainwell goes here, are we du- are we double tapping? Oh, he didn't go. So, are we doing Daniel Jones and Kenneth Gainwell, or should we do Daniel Jones and Zach Wilson? I do I'm, Jones and Gainwell. Me too. Right. That's all I needed to hear. Just needed someone to have an opinion. The theme of the day here. So that Mo was Mo Alley Cox is really one sixty nine. I'd be in for him as our next tight end. He really is it. just like he was just like arbitrage arbitrage David and Joe Career, like big, fast, super efficient. And what about has played like two hundred snaps a season? Right. We already have T Higgins and Tyler Boyd. Should we do Hayden Hurst? I'd be fine with that yeah. too. I don't have that a strong opinion on it, but he's good. Is he? Why? I mean, he's a good think? pick at this price. I don't know about <laughs> in the other sense of it. So is Matt Ryan the big change for you when it comes to Mo Ali Cox, Kyle? Because he's he's always been like a guy who seems to have some ability, and when he gets the ball, you know, it's dangerous with the ball in his hands. But you know, could really never get targeted. I'll throw in Mo Ali, by the way. Yeah, for me, it's just losing Jack Doyle. Like, they were keeping Jack Doyle out there for so many snaps. And, like, he was he's a good blocker, and he catches the ball and falls down. But, like, if those snaps are potentially converted into routes from Miley Cox, which hasn't been true, right? He's been a not backup, but a 1B tight end for a while. And I don't know if he makes the leap right, but I think there's a lot of upside there because he's just, like, big, relatively athletic for his size and has been pretty efficient throughout his career. So obviously he's like, it's not one of the things where like, well, routes times yards per route run in his new role equals tons of fantasy points, but there's at least potential for him to scale up his efficiency at some reasonable level. Crane, we're in round 15 and my running backs are Taylor, Etienne, Kareem Hunt, and Kenneth Gainwell. Do we need to like take a swing at running back that just like in the most overall upside has nothing to do with correlation or week 17, or is, is it still this, correlation the name of the game well i think if you could get Tyrion davis price who's still here that would give you a little bit of both because you have uh, iuk as the failed uh the lance stack attempt <laughs> the so that would... lance stack oh, great moment in drafting history <laughs> <laughs> you know that would that would be a pretty nice one uh I, I do think it makes sense to uh to kind of swing for upside there and, and to Kyle's point, you could make this a four running back build. I think Gainwell's exciting enough uh, and also correlated that you know maybe you could get away with four. I would feel more comfortable with with uh, five in this build. This is kind of a classic hero running back build, but uh, there yeah, goes. I think I think you have a little bit of a luxury pick in that regard. Hey, Tyrion Davis Price, we do have some hero potential running back with Travis Etienne and Kareem Hunt, just either getting traded or. I mean, Nick Chubb has been kind of remarkably healthy for a running back. He might be overdue to miss like eight or nine games at some point. Um, yeah, I kind of like the way we have our running backs built. Not that I'm saying like we can't take another one, right? But like we're probably getting a, a pretty consistent floor. It's only half PPR, but a pretty consistent floor of receptions, especially like we already saw like ETN talk. I, everyone's going to say this. I don't want to take it out to this extent. He wants to be more like Debo Samuel. Yeah, you and everyone else, right? I'd love to be more like Debo Samuel. But they were just nonstop targeting him in practice and that's what we should see and 
there's a very real potential we don't see James Robinson in week one, let alone like healthy for a, a good first chunk of the season. Is Wandale Robinson still there? Wandale? <laughs> yeah. He's oh, a, that uh, guy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no. Is it, well, where's the, the uh, apostrophe? Where, it's after the. It's after the M. Say, where is the apostrophe? Uh, yeah. Right. He's here. <laughs> he's in. Um. That would be. I think if you want to go for running backs. Wondell Robinson would be nice as another stacking partner with Daniel Jones in the game. That's also our big game stack. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in for that. I so we're seven. Think, what are we? Th- sorry, Kyle, you go. I definitely think there's an edge to like stacking some of the more unique games uh, in week 17, right? Because like, let's say, you know, the Chiefs and the Broncos both have good seasons. They go off and they make it to the playoffs like unscathed. None of them have like terrible weeks. It's just going to be you and everyone else playing your Chiefs versus Broncos stack. I think that and that in the Buffalo uh, Cincy game, right? It, there's not like a ton of edge to having them if they all go off in the sense of there's a lot of people in these final rounds of, of the best ball finales, if you want to call them that. So if one of the weird games goes off, like we talked about Seattle, but if one of the weird games goes off and you have a bunch of pieces from it, like I think that could be a really big differentiator, especially in best ball mania, which has four 500 in the finale. And then the DraftKings one has nearly a thousand teams in the finale. It is a true like DFS type tournament. Should we do Wandale and Mo Ali Cox to accomplish a lot of what you just said? I think I one like of the advantages of, of Mo Ali Cox is that he probably will be there at the very last pick of the draft. So yeah, he's we've been taking him way ahead of ADP here. So is Wandale? Uh, you we we're hitting draft no matter what type of pick. I'm, I think yeah, if he's there, I I really like that. And then if you want to get like Pickett, because you do need a third quarterback, Pickett. You have Johnson, so that would make sense. Yeah, right. It's Pickett. I just needed someone to say the word. Um, all of a sudden, I'm like in love with bad players in this format. Uh, absolutely in love with bad. It's kind of quarterbacks. It, it is. If you primarily play season long fantasy, this is very eye opening to how different best ball is. It's you know, I think from afar you can say. Well, not just best ball necessarily. I mean, normal like self contained redraft best ball is not that different. Right, um, right. It's so right. funny that like ball. four years ago, best ball was still a thing. You were just trying to win twelve person leagues, right? And now no one right. even talks about that anymore. It's so weird how far. Oh, M- 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 MFL tens, am I right, folks? Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, Wandale and Kenny Pickett. It is then. Yeah, I would do that. I'm in. But now we're gonna have nine receivers. What does that Kyle, preclude not... us from doing? No, I said I'm in. Let's go. Oh, you're in. Okay. Whatever. Yep. Kenny Pickett. There we go. Squad. The tight ends oh, left are like pretty good like i they think are. hayden hurst and evan ingram are like much better tight end picks than molly cox so i'd i'd at least try to get you know use the adp to your advantage and so yeah yeah one yeah, pick yeah. left we just kicked off round 17 uh one pick left uh Corrine, do you have a take on uh, Taysom Hill at a tight end? Like, is he the ultimate GPP role play? Because, because you remember the one week in on FanDuel two years ago where he should have been on 100%. He was listed as a tight end and was a starting quarterback. No one else projects even close to him, and he was the min price too, right? And you would get that effect of getting, like, locking in 18 points, 20 points from your tight end for a long time if he starts half a season. But at the same time, the fact they signed Andy Dalton, I actually think he is just really a tight end at this point. So I am not getting there, but I think it's an interesting, like, giggo Chad brain discussion. No. <laughs> I'm not really doing it except when I have the Eagles stacked. Okay. And then and then I'm open to it. So this actually would be kind of a spot where, like, I, I'd prefer to do it if I had, like, Mark Andrews or Kyle Pitts or... Travis Kelsey or something where I'm just like, I don't even know why that I need a tight end to like, this is like a pure luxury pick. Yeah. Because he's also, you're not just getting 20 points at a tight end. You can flex him too, right? He could go in the, the flex spot, uh, which is really, if right. you have that Kelsey type of thing, that's what you want. You want to turn your team into the only super flex team. Yeah. But I guess I'm thinking like, if, if, if we are in a universe where Taysom Hill is starting for the saints in week 17 at quarterback, you're going to have to have him <laughs> like that. I don't know. It's a very yeah. low chance, but like that's, who's going to win the team yeah. that has Taysom Hill at quarterback, but they get to play them at tight end. So yeah, not only especially that, if like, I'm already betting on that game to go off, it doesn't even have to be in that game. Just imagine he puts up like a seven game stretch of giving you 18 points at tight end every single week. Like yeah, that would be broken point. too. That's a good point too. 
Yeah, it just doesn't have to be the game stack, right? It can just be that playing a tight oh, end. Taysom Hill just went it. Pick number two. And Karane just took him. It's the Karane team that took Ronald Jones. <laughs> it literally is. That is Karane. That is 100%. You can't convince that, me. That says Eckler. I, you, I don't like Eckler. <laughs> <laughs> That's to throw us off. This is... This is <laughs> no. I mean, come on. Well, Hayden Hurst just went, so we are... It's kind of like Mo Ali Cox or Bust at this point for pick 18. Uh, Wait, look, I mean... Logan Thomas is here really late. Like, I don't I think see you have Tebow starred as well. I, do, I yeah. was wondering if someone was <laughs> the visual gag. I got for all the, for all I'm the not in on Logan Thomas, but like, he was a tight end one two years ago, and like, Austin Hooper's not good. Brevin Jordan could get cut, and I wouldn't be surprised. Logan like, he, Thomas knows a thing or two about being not Brevin good. Jordan's not getting cut. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I did Brevin, they healthy scratch Brevin oh. Jordan eight straight well, games to start. We're game. screwed. He went Mo Ali Oh, oh boy. What do we do? That hurt. Dude, Never. Logan, Logan Thomas. Logan like, Thomas, I, don't... I think, is your move. Yeah. Ugh. Well, he doesn't correlate with anybody on this team. No, Come he's on. a Browns. He's a Brown stack. I'm pretty sure he's a Brown stack, and we have Browns. All right. That's right. I better I believe I know that. That's correct. This is actually highly addicting, but I feel like I would definitely need Kareen and Kyle here just telling me every schedule. It <laughs> actually is every kind minutes. of interesting to have a team doing this at once because it is like having your own little heads-up display for team stacks and whatnot, just by people screaming it at you. <laughs> Although a lot of the uh, the advice that I gave you was after the fact, so uh, I, I definitely need to step up. My... After you'd made your pick, <laughs> yeah, you know what you could have done there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not that helpful. Hey, that right. that Eckler team is pretty sharp, uh, from what I'm seeing. That guy's made some good picks. <laughs> Can we reach out to Matt. Josh Norris and Hayden Winks? Why does Kenny Pickett not have a picture? He needs a picture. That's on pretty I'm messed up. That message I now. Like that. we uh, we should also reach out and let them let them know that we love Joe Burrow's picture. <laughs> Joe Burrow's picture on this is so. so I have to remove Tim Tebow for the queue from the queue because he was yeah. my second dangerous down to my second player being in the queue. So we're coming down to it here. Pick two thirteen. Hear me out. Just happened. Hear me out, guys. Moali Cox is gone. <laughs> Laney Woods is available. Well, honestly. Honestly, if you want to get weird, Ricky Seals Jones is the starting tight end for the Giants. I've had this stack thought. that up. Here I think go. Logan wow. Thomas is just like such a superior, like projects for so many more points than. Yeah, we should do Logan Thomas actually. But I get it. And if Logan Thomas goes, we're still not on the clock yet. We're one pick away. I, I'd be fine with Ricky Seals Jones. He basically played like Logan Thomas for seven games last year, which is to say, went out, caught four for. 40 a bunch of weeks which i don't know we need more tight end points so it can't hurt well we are agonizingly close to being able to take logan thomas i wish i thought of this seals jones take i would have taken thomas so you could have had jones but i mean <laughs> <laughs> so is it Tom, is it thomas now is that yeah the pick? and he does correlate with our browns players so that game another one that it's ugly but if it goes off we are looking good do you agree Crane? i do all right tebow yeah. Do it. Yeah, it oh, should have been okay. Tebow. <laughs> we... All right, let's. We're we're coming up on an hour here. We got to go in a minute. Uh, read out the roster for us, Pat. And how do Crane I do that? Kyle, I don't know how to uh, do it. Can we yeah, do that? Click on the the puppy click, there. Click back. The where I click on the puppy. Yep. Um, teams drafted and the puppy. Here we go. Um, Crane, you read off the team. All right, you got at quarterback Matt Ryan, Daniel Jones, Kenny Pickett. If you got Matt Ryan, always got to go three quarterbacks. Go to running back. We got Jonathan Taylor, Travis Etienne, Kareem Hunt, and Kenny Gainwell. Only four running backs. A little thin, but you always want to push it at running back. Wide receiver, A.J. Brown, T. Higgins, Deontay Johnson, Elijah Moore, Brandon Ayuk, Tyler Boyd, Kenny Galladay, David Bell, Wandale Robinson. We got the Daniel Jones double stack with Jonathan Taylor coming back in week 17. You love that. And then a tight end, Dallas Goddard and Logan Thomas, who I think, you know, maybe a little undervalued given the ACL tear, because the final weeks are what really matters. If Logan Thomas scores a touchdown in week 16 and gets you into the into the final here, who cares if he doesn't play for five? Well, weeks? Strout pointed out the final weeks really matter if you make it there. <laughs> <laughs> right. It don't really matter if you don't make it there. And those words are what earned me a 25% share, share of your grand prize. <laughs> Just for the record. All right. Well, any any other final thoughts there from you? What Kyle, what, what are this? the so grade the team? I mean, even though you guys are grading yourselves to <laughs> Kyle, you grade the team. Then Corrine is going to grade the team. Um, C plus B minus somewhere in there. I'll, I'll say B B minus. I do think at the end of the day we did get a pretty correlated team, and we didn't do it by like reaching. Like we didn't do like egregious reaches. Like we're like oh. 
13th round, we got to get Paris Campbell, right? You know, these players we brought up, but we did at least let the correlation come to us. Uh, we do have a lot of the week 17 stacks as well. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's pretty good. I do think there were some like micro things like we talked about, like the trail on Burks thing. I think we could have set up a stack there, a few other spots that uh, I think we could have made better decisions, but um, yeah, B minus solid. Yeah. It. I think B minus is fair. Uh, I think quarterback is it, we just kind of got boxed out at quarterback uh, along the way. And it does hurt not to have really any upside there. I guess Daniel Jones gives us a little bit, but like, you know, none of these guys are going to be drafted in the first seven rounds next year. Like I feel pretty confident about that. So uh, that that's a little, that's a little tough in like a really top heavy tournament like this, but I do think it's pretty, I mean, we, we got uh, the Eagles. We have three Eagles. We've got three giants. Uh, we've got Jonathan Taylor coming back on the other side of that one. Uh, we have bringbacks with Cleveland and Washington. Uh, so I think correlation wise, we did probably more like a B plus a minus uh, overall construction, probably B B minus. I heard an A in there. I heard an A. That's all I know. <laughs> I think That's all I care a. about too. Remember at the beginning of the show, I said, I don't really care about good players. I just want to correlate, 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 yep. so. correlate. That's the name of the game. Uh, well, hope that was enjoyable for everyone. And I mean, I just want to say best ball drafts are an excellent way to spend your summer. And uh, I would say there, there's maybe another way you guys are spending your summer uh, later on a, a couple months from now, Pat Doherty, if I'm not mistaken, a certain event you're going to. We're, well, we were going to visit Kyle Dvorak's family in the Akron, Canton, Ohio area. And we happened to be stopping by a fantasy football expo at the same time. Um, it was awesome time last year. No, like, yeah. What, kidding aside, it's an amazing time. The Expo in Canton, the entire NFL Edge team is going to be there. Myself, Kyle, Corain, Lawrence Jackson, Denny Carter. Who am I forgetting um, that's going to be there? Ed Williams, Raymond Summerlin. Uh, we're going to be on all sorts of panels. Uh, draft. I'm going to be drafting teams in the Kings Classic, which is amazing every year. Uh, it's becoming kind of like fantasy Woodstock, basically. Um, so, and it's all just started with people staying at Kyle Dvorak's uh, family's home. And, um, and they're still fantasy doing it Woodstock. Year. You mean including like everything that happened at Woodstock, yeah. right? Yeah. You don't mean Woodstock '99, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> no, God, no. Uh, not even Woodstock '94. Thank you. Doing... Biscuit playing? <laughs> yeah, where there was riots and many bad oh, things, Lord. and. <laughs> Uh, Lump Biscuit well, might still be popular in the greater Canton area. No, yeah, I and we're doing, actually doing pretty well. We're doing some of the rides too. We get pretty rowdy out there. So the Lim Biscuit will probably be there, at least on the speakers. The the general yeah. in, in rambunctious Kyle's behavior. Yeah, yeah, that too. It was, it was nice last year, Kyle, to have someone who actually knew about Canton and like <laughs> was like, no, there actually are some cool places in Canton. And we went to them since you told us where they were. I've got a list of, of new places to go to too. Oh, yeah, nice. Kyle be... said the Limp Biscuit, which I mean, <laughs> I just am so jealous that you that you don't know Limp Biscuit well enough to add a the. I I know who Limp Biscuit. <laughs> That's I not know, intentional. I vaguely. I'm I'm gonna. Uh, the official name of this event is the Fantasy Football Expo, if I'm not mistaken. I believe you're correct. It's uh, the Mr. Bob Expose, but yeah. August twelfth <laughs> to fourteenth. In Canton, Ohio. Are we sure it's pronounced Canton and not Can Canton? I think we have a Canton in Georgia. I don't know. We think it's Canton. Kyle thinks it's Canton. It's the fantasyfootballexpo.com if you want to learn more. The fantasyfootballexpo.com. And literally uh, all of us but Matt will be there. Sorry, Matt. And like, That's true. That is true. Yeah, last year uh, I got a chance to meet uh, Connor O'Driscoll, who proceeded to win the FFPC best ball tournament. And then uh, is now running for Rotoviz. So, like, there's, you know, it's not just people from the sites and everything, but people that, that come out tend to be super sharp, have some good fantasy football conversations. Last year, I drafted a team, like, we did a live mock draft, and I drafted a zero RB team, and someone asked me, no, you wouldn't really draft that team, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it was, like, one of my favorite moments of interacting with other humans. So, hopefully Kyle, one of my interested. favorite moments was that I was running late for my morning panel, and... You had to park my car like you were like my what? intern. Why is, why is me being your, your valet one of your favorite moments? I just valeted your car. And you had fun with that? I got dropped off like a VIP at the front of the wow. convention center and had to run in. And was I'm still not doing late. that for anyone else, to be he's, clear. You he's going to accidentally engineer. 
He's going to accidentally engineer that situation again this year. You know that's happening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, geez. I, did I, I even get any okay. breakfast, too? I feel like maybe I did. Uh, Yeah, you did. Wow. Yeah. You got me a bagel. I was, like, running disastrously. <laughs> were, you, were you running Pat's schedule, Kyle? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know whether or not he had breakfast? <laughs> no, I had to get it. in the headset. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, it was kind of a... We were up kind of late the night before, you guys may remember. And, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a t- tough to get there by 10 a.m. Man. Well, again, it's the fantasyfootballexpo.com. It sounds fun. As as you said, Pat, I won't be there, but I am going to FaceTime with you um, as we've arranged. We've arranged that FaceTime. <laughs> of course, we're for, beaming uh, you in, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For ho- holographic technology. Yeah. All right. Uh, before we go, anything you guys want to mention on NBC Sports Edge? Team preview uh, series starting soon. Draft guide wrapping up. Uh, you guys have any articles coming up? I got Dynasty rankings that uh, I'll be posting on the site shortly. Just got them. Got them updated for the draft guide, so they'll be on the site as well. I have USFL stuff coming up over the next two days. And uh, after talking about all the Week 17 stuff, I might do like a, a best ball playoffs thing. So I already had the spreadsheet with all these team totals pulled up. That would be amazing. Right. I'll draft more puppy teams if that exists. I think you're doing it anyways at this point. I think I think you're all in now. Uh, all right, that's going to do it for us. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, wherever you listen. Take a minute to rate and review us as well. I want to say thanks to everyone for listening and watching live with us. And thanks to you three, Crane, Kyle, Pat. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for all the latest fantasy and sports betting advice from NBC Sports Edge. And don't forget to sign up for NBC Sports Edge Plus to get the best in class draft guides as well as season long fantasy, DFS and sports betting tools that will give you the edge.